for what we are doing is to try and deal with uh, the assumptions of GLM when they are violated, when they are violated. And uh, one of the assumptions that can easily be violated is about the independent variables, whereby we say that the independent variables must not be perfectly uh, dependent, okay? So when we have such a situation in scenario whereby the independent variables are perfectly uh, dependent, then we end up with the matrix, our X transpose X. X transpose X. Mm -hmm. This one, you can't get the inverse of it if they are perfectly dependent all together. So we need to deal with this situation. Okay, or if they are almost close to perfectly uh, dependent. Okay, that's when the multicollinearity comes in now. So we want to look at the causes of multicollinearity, the consequences of multicollinearity, then test for multicollinearity, then the solutions for multicollinearity. That's what you're going to do this morning. I hope I'll be able to finish it quickly before we move on to the next uh, chapter. Okay, so multicollinearity. The linear model y is equal to x transpose beta plus the error term u is commonly estimated using the method of least square. Okay. Crucial condition. A crucial condition for the application of the least square is that the explanatory variables are not perfectly linearly correlated or equivalently, that the moment matrix, the one that I have written here, x transpose x is non singular is non-singular. A natural question to ask is, what happened if this assumption is violated? So that's what we are dealing with now, when this assumption is violated, okay? Definition. In modeling a dependent variable y, using some explanatory variables x, which are x, sk transpose, the term multicollinearity is used to mean the presence of a linear relationship among the explanatory variables of the form A transpose X is equal to C. That is the relationship between the, among the explanatory variables, A transpose X is equal to C, where A and C are constant vector and scalar respectively. Okay. Recall also that in econometric, the Regressors are often stochastic or random rather than deterministic. Thus, it is meaningful to talk of correlation among explanatory variables. Further, it follows that multicoordinate is inherent in most economic variables due to the interrelationship that exists among economic variables. I wish there was a way of just admitting them without them coming in. Okay. I will ignore them for some few minutes, then I'll admit all. Okay. All right. Otherwise, they'll keep on disturbing. Now, perfectly correlated exponential variables. If two exponential variables, x, j, and xi and xj are perfectly correlated, i.e. rho xi xj is equal to one. The normal equations, the normal equations, which you are familiar with, the x transpose x beta is equal to x transpose y become indeterminate, i.e. we cannot find the uh, inverse of this matrix, okay? It becomes impossible to obtain numerical estimates of the parameters beta j. And the least square method breaks down since the moment matrix X transpose X is singular or non inflatable or non inflatable Okay. I'm sure so far it's clear. Is that so? Orthogonal explanatory variables. On the other hand, if rho XJ, XI, XJ is equal to zero for all 
i not equal to j the exponential are said to be orthogonal and there is no problem in estimating the parameters that's the opposite okay there's no problem in estimating those parameters in practice however neither of the extreme cases is often met there is often some degree of intercorrelation or interdependence among the exponential variables. In this case, each row xi, xj will be strictly between zero and one, i.e. the modulus of the row xi, xj lies between zero and what and one. And the mod coordinate problem may impair the accuracy and stability of parameter estimates, but the exact effects have not yet been theoretically established, okay? Is it clear so far? If I'm too fast, say so. When any two exponential variables are changing in nearly the same way, it becomes extremely difficult to establish the influence of each other, of each one regressor, say xi, on the dependent variable y separately. For example, suppose that the expenditure of an individual depends on income and liquidity assets by the same proportion, then the influence of one of these exponential variables on expenditure may be erroneous, att erroneously attributed to the to each other, to the other. Okay. Now let's look at causes, like the same way we look at causes for autocorrelation, causes of what of uh, and equal variance, okay? Now let's look at causes of multiple linearity. As before, the treatment of multiple linearity problem requires full knowledge of common causes of multiple linearity. The next section discusses some causes, common causes of multiple linearity. Number one, co-integration, co-integration, okay, co-integration. That's number one cause, co-integration. <laughs> This is the main cause of multiple linearity. There's tendency of economic variables to move together over time. Economic variables are often influenced by the same factors so that variables show the same broad pattern of behavior over time. For example, economic booms, crashes, etc. affect a number of economic variables which, tend, which then tend to change, i.e or decrease together or although some variables may lag behind or lead others. Thus, variables such as exchange rates, prices, inflation, income, expenditure, etc. tend to show marked relationships in their evolution over time. The phenomenon is referred to co-integration, i.e. the variables are moving together over time. If one increases, the other one is increased. Both they are affected by what? By the same factors. Are we together? I gave you examples of what? Exchange rates, uh, prices, inflation, income, expenditure. All these variables, if one goes up, you see that the rest of it, they go up. If they go down, the rest they go down. If you look at the time series plot, you see that they are moving together. Some may lag behind a little bit, but overall, you see that there is a trend. They are moving together with time. Are we together? That phenomenon is referred to as what? Co-integration, where variables move together over time. Are we together? Okay. We have an example of Cobb-Douglas equation there, but there is no need to go into detail. Okay. Number two, use of leg variables. Use of leg variables. Use of leg variables. The use of leg variables, such as yt minus one as regressor, is now quite common in econometrics, and it has generally given satisfactory results in many researches. However, using such leg variables makes multiple linear almost certain to exist in such models. Thus, regressions involving leg variables must be dealt with ocean. Is it clear? Uh -huh. Let's say inflation is yt. 
and we have yt minus one. So as time progresses, what happens to this? Do they move together over time? If one goes up, does the other one goes up as well? It goes up, but linked with one period altogether. Uh -huh. So there's a relationship between this yt and yt minus one at the end. Okay, if you try, you will see that there is a relationship between these two variables. If they are explanatory variables, are we together? And that will cause multiple linearity as well. So the first cause of multiple linearity, the second, third, lack of experimental control. Lack of experimental control. Lack of experimental control, in particular, administrative interference is a fundamental cause of multiple linearity. Administrative interference. So if there is administrative interference on the inflation, does it affect exchange rate? Does it affect price? Does it affect all the others? It does. Obviously, it does affect. Okay? Because they will be working with something that has been what? interfered with or tempered with okay so lack of experimental control data smoothing data smoothing that's number four statistical practice such as data smoothing that is sampling procedures etc can also lead to multiple linearity so these are the four causes there are more but for purpose of this course i just gave you four Okay, so number one is what? Number two? Number three? Number four? Wonderful. So, consequences. What are the consequences of multicollinearity? What are the consequences of multicollinearity? Okay. We have already indicated that if two experimental variables, say xj and xi, are perfectly correlated, i.e. rho xi xj is equal to one, then the normal equations x transpose x beta, which is equal to x transpose y, becomes indeterminate, i.e. it becomes impossible to obtain numerical values for the parameters beta j. And the least square method breaks down is the moment matrix x transpose x is then singular or non-invertible. I've mentioned this over and over, okay? Consider the two exponential variables, variable case, whereby we have the first equation, which is given by what? Y is supposed to beta naught plus beta one, x one plus beta two, x two plus the error term ut, okay? You can tell your neighbor that it's too early for you to sleep. <laughs> Am I boring? Am I boring? For someone at this at this early hour, you're already sleeping. Huh? Is it fair? It's all right. Let's continue. Let's continue. My friend, please sit down, sit down, please. Sit down, please. You are disturbing the whole class. I mentioned it. Sit down, please. Do not obey me. So why did you come? Within 10 minutes, you're already walking out. Is it fair? Within 10 minutes and the class is paid like this, you have to ask everybody to stand up for you. Is it fair? Ah, let's be let's be real. Yeah? Yeah, so you shouldn't have come, you should have sat outside. Yeah. You have sat outside. Okay? Yeah. If there is a problem that you are encountering or there is something, you just sit outside, then don't disturb everybody. You are disturbing me, number one. Number two, just same the whole class. Now I have to spend five minutes explaining. <laughs> because of you. Okay. 
So don't sleep. Don't walk up and down. Within an hour, we'll say, okay, now it's time to, if you want to go out, you can go out. If you want to come in, you can come in. Okay. Are we together? Uh -huh. All right. That's the first equation that we have there. And we are saying that x1 and x2, they have a relationship. Are we together? In principle, we are supposed to say that they are what? Independent. That means there is no relationship between what? X1 and what? X2. But we are saying that when there is multiple coordinate now, the two, the X1 and X2 are what? There is a relationship between the two. They are related, okay? By dropping one of the variables, X2, let's say it's equal to X1. So the equation becomes, because there is a relationship there, so we can drop one of the variables and equate to what? X1 is equal to X2, okay? The equation becomes, Y is equal to beta naught plus beta one plus beta two X one plus error term U. It is clear that we can obtain an efficient estimate of the sum of the coefficients. However, it is impossible to get efficient estimates of the individual parameters. Thus, that is the sum beta one plus beta two will be identified, but the individual parameters beta one and beta two will be unidentified. Is it clear? There is a close relationship between multiple coordinate and identification problem discussed in the later course, I think in the last chapter. Okay, whereby we talk about the identification problem. Okay, but for now, so far, so good. Do you agree? If I'm too fast, say so. Sometimes I was some things that you don't know or you didn't grasp in the lower courses. Okay, so you are allowed to lift your hand and say, say that one, please explain. Then I'll explain. I'll try my best to explain. Okay. If the exponential variables are not perfectly collinear, but are to a certain degree correlated, i.e. the modulus of uh, the row x i x j lies between zero and one. Okay. Then the effect of multi are uncertain. Multi can cause change in the sign of a parameter resulting in erroneous interpretation of the results. Okay. We'll go into details of this one. Are we together? Can I move on? Test of multicollinearity. When you're testing for multicollinearity, you inspect the regression results. In particular, examination of the standard errors of parameter estimates all together. Then you also uh, inspect high partial correlations. We've talked about correlations. You also inspect the high R squared statistics. You also inspect low T statistic values. Then you also expect, uh, inspect sensitivity of parameter estimates. For example, if a few observations are dropped and re-estimation of the model yields significantly different parameter estimates, this could indicate presence of multicollinearity. So these are the five things that you can inspect when you're checking for multicollinearity. Okay, as I mentioned, we'll consider these ones as we consider how to test for multicollinearity. Okay, if most or all of the of these events okay, there is a good reason to suspect multicollinearity. And should all levels of partial correlations be available, it may be possible to get some indications about the nature of the multicollinearity problem through a study of their patterns. Now, the first one, the first test is what is called freaks, freaks confluence analysis. There must be a heading there. I don't know how I missed that one. Freaks confluence analysis. But this is the description of what? Freaks confluence analysis. There must be a heading of freaks confluence analysis there. Okay. Freaks confluence analysis. Freaks confluence analysis is somewhat systematic implementation of the above indicated procedure of examining regression results. In this procedure, an explanatory variable is classified as useful, superfluous, or detrimental. Okay, we classify 
the individual exponential variables that we add onto the equation is what useful as superfluous or detrimental. It can fall in any one of these uh, categories. Okay. So what we do in this is that when we have a regression model, when we have y t, then we have variables x one t, x two, x three t, and so forth. Do you get it? So we have our dependent <coughs> variable. We have exponential variables. Okay. So if we have this one and we want to check for multicollinearity. What we do first, we perform a regression model of y t against each one of these independently. So we have end up with what three models. Then out of these three models, based on the other squared and other uh, considerations, you choose the best model out of this. Are we together? You choose the best model of the three. So it's y t versus x one t, y t versus x two t, y t versus x three t. Then you check now which one has the highest other squared and so forth. So it was it. After checking that one, you choose the first model, the one with the highest other squared. That's the model that you choose. Mm -hmm. Then you try and add now, if it, let's say it's yt versus x1t, then you try and add x2t to that model, to the first model that you have chosen. Then you check now individual parameters. What are they, what is happening now? Is the sign of individual parameters changing? Okay. Is the standard t, t statistic is it changing? And based on what I've explained before on this one here, on the high partial correlations, R squared, t statistic values, and so forth, and sensitivity of parameters. You check all those with what has happened. Then you take x to the t and also put it on that model. So the the Independent variables that we are adding now, we can classify them into three groups. That is, it can be useful. That means it is important. Are we together? Then it can be what? Superfluous. That means it doesn't add any value, whether to include it or not to include it. it doesn't add any value. Okay? Then there is another one, detrimental. That means if we include it, it's detrimental. It has detrimental effects. Okay? So those are the three things. So I'm going to explain now, useful, uh, superfluous and detrimental now. Okay, so now let me explain. But so far, I, are you getting what I'm saying? So this is express, explanation now of the procedure. A, regress the dependent variable on each of one of the exponential variables separately and examine the regression results, which, were, which is what I've just explained. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. Number two, choose the elementary regression which appears to give the most plausible results on both criteria used and then gradually add variables and examine their effects on the individual coefficients. That is the standard error, the R squared, Darby Watson statistics, etc. Now, a new variable, a new variable now is classified as useful superfluous or detrimental as follows. Number one, if the new variable improves R squared, R squared is improved, then, and does not affect the values of individual coefficients. More coefficients than a beta node, beta one are not affected. Okay? Then it is considered as useful. It is considered as useful and is retained is an explanatory variable. Is it clear? Okay. Can I give you an example? Yes, there's someone outside here, my prefect. He has a question. Yes. I've explained it. His question is, we have performed three, or, yeah, three regression models there. So how can we, how are we able to identify this is the most plausible or the most important? 
based on other squares. And also that one on and so forth. That there's no autocorrelation and so forth. Okay. Yes. Huh? Oh, no, no, the room. So why are we not saying so? Yeah. All right. So now I gave you the first one that if the new variable improved other squares, other squares is improved to two seconds and does not affect the values of individual parameters, the coefficients, and a beta naught and beta one are not affected. They remain, if a panagram are positive, they remain as positive. If they were negative, they remain as what? Negative. All together. Only there is an addition of what? Of that. Then the other squared is also improved. Can I give you an example? Okay. I will not consider a political example. I will just consider a simple example, but you'll be able to extend it. Okay. Let's say, What's your name? Chinashe. Chinashe marries a wife. After marrying a wife, everything is going on smoothly. Everything is well. Chitose. That means this other speed is what? High. <laughs> Children are still going to school. Nice schools. Now, there is an addition of another girl now. Who comes into his life and he decides to marry that wife? Now he has another wife being added to the family now. But this wife now comes to add value to what Tinashe is doing. Maybe the money, the income increases. If he had two houses, now he has three houses, it continues increasing. So the, wife, the second wife has come to add value to what he has already. So that one is what useful. <laughs> The addition of a second wife is what? <laughs> now, another, another situation. So we have got it as useful. So the addition of a new variable, now economic variable, it can be income, it can be expenditure, it can be inflation. If you add it to the first regression model, it's useful when the other squared is improved. When it doesn't affect, your first wife is not being affected. She's just happy as she used to be. She's content as she used to be. It's not affecting. Okay. Now, second scenario. If the new variable does not improve other squared, if the new variable does not improve what? Other squared. And does not affect the value of individual coefficients then it's considered superfluous. Okay, sub, supposed to be string of superfluous, eh? supposed to be you. And is rejected. So the addition of the second wife now, I don't I know improve. That means the income you buy, I know what I say, I know improve. She's just as good as nothing as though she was not there. <laughs> so we say that is, she's what? Superfluous. And it, it, she's just like a flower, it's more poor, but it's not getting any value. Okay, that's superfluous. It's not improving other squared. It's not improving what does not affect individual coefficients. Okay. But when you are writing now, when you are <laughs> asking questions, don't give examples like what I'm giving you. Here. <laughs> Please. Uh -huh. Then someone say, oh, if you marry a first wife, then you add one a second wife. <laughs> I'll give you a zero. Third one. Third one. Third one. If the new variable affects considerably the signs and the values of the coefficients, it is considered detrimental. Now the second wife that has been added on, it's affecting now the other squares. It's affecting now individual coefficients. The first wife is not to help about it. Now there is there, there are fights now in the house. Uh -huh. There are fights in the house because of the what second wife. Now that wife, second wife, is considered as what detrimental. 
Uh -huh. So with this example, what do you think is the scenario? Is it superfluous? Second wife, is it superfluous? Is it detrimental? Is it useful? <laughs> <laughs> Boys are saying detrimental. I'm saying useful. Girls are saying detrimental. All right, you're entitled to your opinion. Okay, so these are the two scenarios. So I can ask you a question. I can ask you a question. Define useful. Define when a variable is added. How can I say it? Okay, let, let me get a past example, but maybe we can read from that question. If I still have a question similar to that one. Okay, A3, state the main four causes of multiple linearity. Now uh, that one is a piece of cake. What are they? Next, next, next. Then next, briefly describe Fritz confluence analysis. I've described it. You end up to the extent of what? Explaining when is a variable is useful? When is a variable detrimental? When is a variable what? Superfluous. All together. You can do that. Yes. And you get your what? 10 marks. Wow. Am I not liberal? Very. Thank you. You can clap for me. Okay. Let me look for another past example paper. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Now, another method to detect Fritz confidence analysis. It's called spectral decomposition of the moment matrix X transpose X. Spectral decomposition of the moment matrix X transpose X. That's another method. We have done physical confidence analysis, now spectral decomposition. <coughs> I'm just wondering, should I go into detail on this? <laughs> <laughs> okay so I'll, ju I'll just say know that there is something called spectral decomposition of the moment matrix i can go into detail and explain everything but i don't think for now it's necessary I i'll just give you what i'm trying to do what i'm doing here is to give you a push then you can extend are we together? Just like when we are dealing with what? Different variances. I gave you two tests, but I mentioned that there are more than two tests. So those who want to read, they can read on their own in extent. Those who want to say they can search on their own in what extent. Same applies with autocorrelation. I gave you a test, one test, which is what? Jumping also tests. But I said there are also several tests that you can perform. You can read on your own in what? In extent. Are we together? Then same applies here when it comes to multiple linearity. I gave you fixed confidence analysis, but I said you can what extend. One of the extensions is what spectral decomposition of the moment matrix X transpose X. Okay, I just give, gave you a brief introduction to it, which I'm saying also go and read on your own. Okay, and extend. So we end up with again values, again vectors, then we end up with lambda. Okay, if lambda is greater than 20%, then we say that. Okay, I, I think this one goes hand in hand with the principal component analysis. If I'm not mistaken, it goes hand in hand with principal component analysis. Okay. Now, example, this is an example. We have the following data showing expenditure on clothing. 
expenditure on clothing. Okay, expenditure on clothing. Disposable income, which is our X1. Liquid assets, X2. Price index for clothing items, X3. And a general price index, X4. So we have our dependent variable, which is Y1. And we have X1, X2, X3 up to X4. And we have the data set there. Now, using the usual GLM assumption, assuming the usual GLM assumptions hold, conduct an overall F test for the significance of the model with all explanatory variables included. Okay, this one, you make use of uh, statistical softwares to just perform a what? An F test or an over table. Perform a regression, but one for all the variables. And here we are assuming that all the what assumptions hold. The next question is what? Compute correlation matrix for the exponential variables and comment on the results. Okay, so after computing the correlation, there will be now X1. Like if, for example, we have this, it's a correlation. Now we also have what? X1T, X2T, X3T. So we have the correlations here. The, the diagonal will be what? Ones. Okay. So you will see that some have high correlations. Okay, they have a high correlation. Some they have a low correlations. That would be your comment now. Commenting on that. Oh, what has happened here? What did I do? Okay. So you comment that this and this are related. Which experimental variables are related? Which ones are not related? That would be your comment. Okay, those with high correlations, so what highly correlated. Some will have negative correlation, some will have positive correlation. Okay. Use freeze confidence analysis to assess the effects, if any, of the multiple linear in the regression of clothing on the supposed to be exponential variables. Now you perform now freeze confidence analysis. So you, you, you regress what y versus what x1, y versus x2 for all the four. Are we together? Then you choose the best one, based on other squares, based on that being Watson test, based on all the approachable model, all together. Then from there now, you begin to add one variable at a time and see the effect. Is it superfluous? Is it detrimental? Is it useful? If it's useful, you choose the one that is useful. Then now you have a, a model now with two variables now, two exponential variables. You add the other two, and see the effects till you reach a model that is what most plausible model or a good model or an adequate model. Is it clear? It's modeling now. But here we are dealing with what multiple linear, but at the same time you are performing modeling. Okay. Yes, you have a question. To do? We cannot do it because uh, we need a software to do it because you have to perform a regression while versus the first one you can do. Second one becomes more complicated now. What I can basically do is to give you an output, then say, based on this, perform free confidence analysis. Because imagine regressing Y with four variables. Obviously, you need a software to do that. Are you getting what I'm saying? She asked you a question that can we do C together? Then I said it will be difficult for us to do it without using software. You need to use either ARA or Minitab or SAS to do it. We cannot do it manually or using a calculator. Yes. Pass exam papers. Uh, not really. Normally I will just give a question like describe this. Uh, normally, <laughs> but but since since you are interested, since you are interested, I'm reconsidering. Uh -huh. Since you are interested, I'm reconsidering. Yes. Someone is actually saying that put it in section A. Uh -huh. He said put it in section A. We want it in section A. Okay. Now solutions. 
That was a test. We said, first one is what? Three conference analysis. Then you spoke about what? Spectral. What is it? Spectral what? Yes, spectral decomposition of the moment matrix. Now let's look at solutions. Let's look at solutions. Solutions. Solutions to the multiple net problem vary and in general depend on the severity of the problem. Availability of data, i.e. larger samples, importance of the exponential variable, which appear to be collinear, as well as the purpose for which the model is needed. In view of the foregoing discussion, some possible solutions to the problem of multiple are, ah, these are possible solutions. Use of different regressors. This approach is only valid as long as misspecification is avoided, i.e. there will be biased estimates. Now, next is increase the sample size. If you increase sample size, it can take the effect of what? Multicollinearity. The logical power of this procedure lies in the model's ability to yield estimates that converges or converge to their true values as the sample size increases to infinity. Number three, principal component analysis. This procedure uses subspace of the sample information and thus reduces the information sets dimension by excluding all but significantly important components for entering the estimation procedure. And you know about principal components. We have 30 variables. Out of these 30 variables, if you perform principal components, then you reduce those 30 variables to what? To maybe four variables. But they still contain a lot of information about what the 30 variables. So you can use the four variables that you now have to make decisions based on the field variables. But these four variables, they represent what? The 30 variables. Are we together? And we also say that these four variables are independent of each other. The ones that you end up with, they are independent, which satisfies our assumption of independence. Are we together? Is it clear? Yes, thank you. The procedure and other processes such as the rich regression are also described, are not described here, but can be found if need from the reference cited in the biograph app, blah, 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 blah. Concluding remarks, and that's the end of multicollinearity. You can click, you are allowed to click. Yes. All right. That's the end of multicollinearity. Any questions? So now, what we are going to do, if you want to take a break now, or if you want to go out, you can go out now. Then if you don't want to go out, know that for the next one hour, we'll be here. So if you go out, somebody outside will come and replace your place. Then you come and sit outside when you come back. Is it fair? So if you want to go out, you can go out now. There is a head outside there. All right. What is the panel? You want to go push on Bishana? I'm going to squeeze all to your plat. I'm just going to be some. If you can just push and squeeze a little bit so that one or two can come in. Oro, Oro, hello. Or those who can share my chair, Wait, 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 wait before. Wait. And I find the one who wants someone. Yes. 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 Okay. It's useful, but you also have to consider to my coefficient that we can say actually. Yes.
Okay. All right. I think we can move on. We can move on. Can you make them keep quiet? Now, the next topic, the next topic, which is also quite simple, is on further topics in econometrics estimation. We have dealt with autocorrelation. We have dealt with uh, multiple linearities. Another one. Uh, finish it off. <laughs> okay. So now we are now going to deal with what further topics in econometric estimation. This one now I'm just pick that one, pick that one, pick that one to make further topics. Okay. So just pay attention. But for this one, I would prefer not using the slide that I've prepared, but rather using the so module. So I'll take you through. I love this class, I tell you. Oh, those who are looking for, for example, in the module, I think there is an example there that illustrates or demonstrates. Okay, everything there. You can see regressors, then you choose the first model, add one, the next variable, and so forth. Can you see it? Uh -huh. So you can go and start on your own. Okay, further topics in econometric modeling. So this is what we are going to consider in this particular one. Can you pay attention, please? This is what we are going to consider. Those on Zoom, can you see my screen? Are you on Zoom? Yes. yes we can. Okay, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. By the end of this unit, you should be able to, number one, explain what is meant by linear restrictions. Number two, explain how linear restrictions are arrived at in practice. Number three, distinguish between restricted and unrestricted estimation. Number four, perform restricted estimation of GLM. Number five, test linear restrictions for the model R beta is equal to small letter R. Now, test for structural changes such as beta one is equal to beta two. Define a leg distributed model. Describe coex geometric scheme for leg distributed model. Define and give examples of dummy variables. Then focus. Oh, what's happening here? Focusing using models containing linear restrictions, left exogenous variables, as well as dummy variables. Okay. Linear restriction. Linear restriction. So what I'm going to do now, you can see what I'm taking you through. I'm not going to... <laughs> take you through this on linear but but you know what i'm saying what yes. but i cannot give you everything but this one is important okay so what i'm going to do i'll give you assignments then you go and research on your own read this everything is there on the on this particular section everything is there so i'll give you questions answer those questions and do those questions on your own. And it will be what fourth 
assignment. And this one is due on, you said it's Monday. <laughs> So it's section, it's section, read it, please read it, read it, go through it, because questions are going to come from this particular section, but I won't take you to, I want you to also go and do a bit of study, okay, rather than for me to just explain everything, everything, I'm leaving this one, I can easily explain it, but I also want to go and read on your own, okay. So all this, then I'll give you a question. You go and attempt it and answer it. Okay. So where am I starting from? I'm now starting from section 6.3. So 6.2, there will be questions that I'm going to give you as assignment, submit on Monday. Okay, Monday, what time? <laughs> Now let's move on to stochastic regressors. Stochastic regressors. <coughs> Are we together? Are we together? Yes. yes. Stochastic regressors. The assumption of non random regressors is implausible. Okay? For virtually all econometric data, since the econometrician cannot fix any variable in which he or she is what interested. The economic system under observation determines both the random disturbance and the explanatory variable, xij. The resulting explanatory variable and the error terms tend to be correlated, resulting in bias regression estimates. The, the, this correlation is known as contemporaneous correlation. Okay, it's also another common question. What define contemporaneous correlation? Okay. So contemporaneous correlation, if we have a model given by that, y is equal to beta naught plus beta one x one plus the error term e. The core, if the covariance of the error term and x is not equal to zero, we end up with what is called contemporaneous correlation. Are we together? So the definition just the covariance of the error term and the exponential variable, if it's not equal to zero, we end up with contemporaneous correlation. Yes. This can be proved easily as shown in Kutsianis. Kutsianis is one of the books that you have to read. Now let's look at causes of errors in uh, variables, causes in errors in variables, causes of errors in variables. The assumption of absence of errors of measurement is also implausible in most cases, since the X's like the Y's may include measurement errors for the following reasons, okay? These are some of the causes of what errors. Number one, extrapolation data extrapolation data. Aggregate published series are often from samples in which extrapolation is used to cover the aggregate or macro variables. And this results in sampling errors. Okay, that's one of the causes. Another cause is use of indices. Use of indices. Use of indices instead of quantity variables deflects the figures which results in what measurement errors, use of indices, okay? Then use of dummy variables, use of dummy variables such as approximations to explanatory variables results in errors of measurement. Since the dummy variables, which are proxies for the variables they represent are by their nature subject measurement errors. Okay, so these are the three causes of errors in variables. Extrapolation data, use of indices, use of dummy variables. Okay, we'll go into details, into details of some of these. Okay. Now, what are the consequences once we have errors in variables? What are the consequences? 
One of the consequences is what I've described already, which is called what? Contemporaneous correlation. Contemporaneous correlation. Errors in variables result in contemporaneous correlation as mentioned above. Then you also have what bias and inconsistent parameters. You know about bias, you know about inconsistent. Okay, you have done it in inference. Okay, the resulting parameter estimates which will be both biased and inconsistent. The bias and inconsistency remains as the sample increases. Now, solutions for contemporaneous correlation. What are the solutions? I can hear some people talking. What, am I saying something that is uh, off? What is the problem? Lift your hand, then I will address it. We shall discuss two methods of solutions to contemporaneous correlation. The first one is called the inverse least square method. The second one is called the instrumental variable methods. Okay, I will discuss these ones in detail. Okay, there are many other methods that can be used, such as the weighted least square, Dubbins ranking method. These can be found in several econometric texts, such as those listed in the bibliography. First method, inverse least square method, inverse least square method. Okay. This procedure assumes that Y is non-stochastic and error-free simply, error-free, implying that the error term U associated with Y is zero, but X has measurement <coughs> error, which we do it by V. Okay, so X is what measurement error, which we do it by V. So our model, instead of having the usual model of y is equal to beta naught plus beta one x plus the error term u, the error is now contained in what? In v. Okay. So we can also model as part of, it becomes part of the model or the variable x. So we say y is equal to beta naught plus beta one x minus the error term v, where v is the error in x. Solving for x, use the inverse model. Okay, when you want to solve, if you simplify that one or making X subject of the formula, we get that. Do I have to go through it? No, no thank you. So if you make X subject of the formula, you end up with what? Minus beta naught over beta one plus one over beta one Y plus V. Okay, so, hello? Say it loud so that I can hear or lift your hand. Now you don't want to say. Okay. So we have made X subject of the formula there. Okay. And letting now the first one in a minus beta naught over beta one, B, B naught. Okay. Then one over beta one, B what? B one. So what is our model now? X is equals to? B naught plus B one Y plus our error term V, which is now the simple linear regression model. Is that so? Are you following? So now we can find B one and B naught using the usual formulas for finding those parameters. You still remember them? Now, after obtaining them, now we have to take them back and try and solve for beta naught and beta one, which is what we've done here. Since B naught is equal to this and B one is equal to that. And we've obtained B naught and what? B one, all right together. So you can easily now revert it back now. So our B one head will be one over B one head and B naught head is equal to minus B naught head over B one, beta one head, all together. These estimates are biased, but consistent. They are biased, but consistent. So do you see where the inverse comes from? Do you see where the inverse comes from? 
<coughs> normally would replace y versus x. But now here we have to make the inverse now, make it the opposite. Regress what x against y, then get the estimates. Then go back to our uh, combinations of beta not, b not and b1 here. Then so for beta not and beta one. Then we put them now in our regression model, which is what 6.2, model 6.2. We now put beta not head and beta one head. That will be our model. That's the invest inverse least square methods. Is it clear? If I ask you a question, describe the inverse least square methods, will you be able to do it? Yes. I can check for you. Okay. That's the first method. Did I manage to do my good my, my job well of explaining this inverse list? Clear for me. I know that if I don't say clear for me, no one will clear for me. So I have to say it. <laughs> what do you think? I have to what? To say it. So then you clear for me. My friend, you don't want to clear for me. Please clear for me. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but is it clear? The bottom line is what I've explained. Is it clear now? Is it clear? All right. Can we move on to the next method? It's called the instrumental variable method. Instrumental variable method. So I said I mentioned two methods here. The inverse least squares and the instrumental variable method. This is a procedure in which we desire to estimate, again, same model. Y is equal to beta naught plus beta one X plus minus V. Where the expected of X, U is not equal to zero. The expected of X U is not equal to zero. Now, what we do, a variable Z is used to replace in place of X. A variable Z is used in what? In place of Z. It's a variable Z is used in place of X. Z is called instrument of variable and has some of the of its characteristics as follows. So I want to look for a variable Z, which have the following characteristics. Number one, must be economically useful. All together, don't just choose any variable. It must be what? economically useful. Number two, it must be strongly correlated to X. That's number two. Number three, can substitute X and reflect X and Y relationship adequately. Can substitute X and reflect X and Y relationship adequately. Must be independent of the error term U. So those are the four characteristics. Now, in Y is supposed to be beta naught plus B naught plus B one X plus U, the normal equations of this model are given by that, the normal equations. You understand normal equations. Is that so? This implies that we have assumed that the error term, the expected value of the error term X U of X U is, is not equal to zero. And ordinary square cannot be used to, over, to overcome this problem, multiply the original function by Z. And we obtain that. We are substituting now where we have X, we are putting what? Z. Can you see it? <coughs> then since the expected of Z, summation of Z U, which is equal to summation of expected of Z U is equal to zero. We can end up with a regression model given by that. And having done that, this method removes contemporaneous correlation. We end up with B1 and B0. Okay. If you have done a regression, this should be straightforward and you can be easily follow. What we are simply doing is that we know that Z, X is contemporaneously correlated. Then we are substituting X with another variable called what? Which we have to define as what? Z. But now, expected value of X, U, is not equal to zero, but the speed value of z u is equal to zero. So we can now use what ordinary square to come up with the 
solution with beta one head and b one head and b not head. Okay. So another question which can easily come is describe contemporaneous correlation. Okay. Now let's talk about leg, leg variables and distributed leg models. Now I, I can feel it when people are feeling tired and uh, when I'm just moving and I'm not moving with anyone. Mm -hmm. I can feel it. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, now, now what, what I can just say is that this section that we're going into now is very simple and straightforward. So allow me to just finish this. It's very simple and it's very straightforward. If it's complicated, if you find anywhere that is complicated, stop me and say, say, we don't understand. Let's stop here, we'll do it another day. I'll give you that permission. <laughs> I've not even started, then you are saying it already. What does it mean? Huh? Let the variables and split the leg field. I said, you can stop me this section on 6.4. You can stop me, then I can stop, then we'll do it another day. Okay. So I'm going to appoint one person who will do that. Can I? My friends. You're not even listening. Yeah? He's tired. He's tired. Tired of what? Tired of what? <laughs> who can I appoint here? I, I want someone who is uh, huh? who is fair. <laughs> you are fair. Are you fair? Okay. All right. So if I'm saying that section six point four, if you find it complicated. Stop me. I'll stop. We'll do it another day. Okay. Can I continue? Yes. Where's my friend who used to erase? Oh, oh he's sitting outside. Oh, next time I'll reserve a seat for you. There is no next time. <laughs> Okay, so let the variables, let the variables. So I'm starting at a point, you can read the rest. You know what leg variables is are? Understand? Yt, then the leg ones are what? Yt minus one, yt minus two, yt minus three. So she done. This also. When you also have my xt, we can have my leg variables as a dependent. We can have my leg variables as they are independent, my exponential variables. That is xt, xt minus one, xt minus two, and so forth. Are we together? Is it clear? Okay. Now let's talk about my leg the variables, H, my exogenous leg the variables first. Then we move on to my leg the variables, RG, endogenous. Okay. So my exogenous, the general form is given by that. Yt is equal to C plus C naught, Xt plus C1, Xt minus 1, plus up to the next. That is, we are regressing yt versus the variables of x's. 
Is it clear? So I'll skip that. Now, solutions to the problems of exogenous leg variables. We have what is called weighted leg scheme. Weighted leg scheme. We have what is called what? And in these weighted leg schemes, in order to come up with the model and we have another weighted leg schemes. So there are three, if not four, different uh, weights that we can put on the leg scheme. Okay. So the formula for the weighted leg scheme is given by WT is equal to W0 XT plus W1 XT minus 1 plus W2 XT minus 2 up to plus WS XT minus X. Yes. Are we together? Where the W0, W1 are the weights that we are concerned with. Okay. And once we have this, we end up with a variable called WT. Is it clear? So our concern now is how do you put my weights higher under W0, W1, W2, up to WS? How do we incorporate those uh, weights? How do we incorporate this? So we have four, if not three, different ways of doing it. The first one is called declining leg scheme. Declining leg scheme. As name implies declining, what does declining means? We are going down. And it's really, if you are declining. So we end up with what? If our S is equal to four, the declining leg scheme, we end up with W1T is equal to W0XT, which is the usual formula. Are we together? Now, where W0 is greater than W1, is greater than W2, is greater than W, greater than W, you can see that the weights are what? Going down. That's the declining leg scheme. It's not simple. An example, we can have my leg scheme on half, one third, one quarter, one eighth, one tenth. So it's declining leg scheme. It's not simple. My friends, it's not simple. So far, so good. Okay. So the declining leg scheme, Graphical. That's the kind of leg scheme. Then we have another one called the rectangular leg scheme. Rectangular leg scheme. As the name implies, rectangular. That means the leg scheme, this, the weights are what? constant. They're the same. We are just giving equal weights to all the legs. Is it okay? Okay. So we have again our model W3T. W0, W1. So W0 is equal to W1, is equal to W2, is equal to W3, is equal to W4. That's rectangular. I see very, if you consider about our weights, it will be something like what? They are the same. Constant. Okay. Next. Inverted V. Inverted V. Inverted V, we are now saying the ways. Inverted V. Oh, V is supposed to be like this. So if you say inverted V, what does it mean? Up and down. So the ways, they go up initially, then they go down. That's inverted V. So these are the different diagrams for the granular leg scheme, for rectangular leg scheme, and inverted V. So you can see inverted V, one over 12. You open it up one over six. You open it up one over four. You take out Zika, one over five, one over eight. That's inverted V. It's all simple. Very simple. So now, once we have our WIT, which is our new variable now. Do you attack which is a much but now it is supposed to C naught plus C1 WIT plus the other term? That's our new model there. Then you can model that. Can you see it? Okay. So 
So now, where do we apply these uh, Malek schemes are? Consumption function. In the consumption function, the declining weight leg scheme can be used, resulting in the model, that particular model. So we have consumption function. We have investment function. We can also apply to investment function. Then, here describing the shortcomings. The method of arbitrary ways is extremely arbitrary. Are we together? Because you are just putting arbitrary weights. So the method of arbitrary weights is what? Extremely what? Are you angry with me? Are you sure? So the method of arbitrary weights is what? Extremely arbitrary. Since the researcher assigns these weights and to achieve the best fit, numerous repetitions of the estimation have to be conducted by changing legs and schemes themselves. This is time consuming. That's the shortcoming. Okay. So what is the shortcoming of leg schemes? Time consuming. And what else? Now, that was for exogenous. Now let's, let's move on to endogenous. Endogenous, we dealt with exogenous. Now let's do with what? Endogenous. Endogenous. Huh? Oh, Lorraine, why is this moving in and out? Huh? Network. Okay. Now, for endogenous leg schemes, we have one of the common methods, which is called coix geometric scheme. Coix geometric scheme. And this coix geometric scheme is very popular. And examiners, I don't know this time, they like to ask about this particular one. They like to ask about this particular one. Let me check even the previous exam whether it was there or not. No, we are almost done. Ish. E. B6. Define the term dummy variable. Then state five examples of how a dummy variable can be used as proxies for other variables. I sort of covered that in my dummy variables here. Then C, derive coix geometric scheme for the model, deriving it. It's a common question here. Then state and describe three types of leg schemes. What are the three types of leg schemes? And what else? What else? So number one, huh? declining, number two, number three. So why are you worrying me and bothering me like this? I should have just said, go and read chapter six and omit the exam. So my only other question is, I can derive coix geometric flex scheme. What is it? Huh? No, we are in a lecture. Why do you want to disturb us? Another side. Oh, that's what happened. The man of two thousand again. We swap and go to the DH using this and exchange. Where is he? Matego. Where is Matego? He's not in this class. He's not in this class. And what's the next level? And at Matego. Arunyara. I've tried. All right. 
So now we are on C, B6C. B6C. So it was a derived coex geometric scheme for the model. Please pay attention. Pay attention. <coughs> derived coex geometric scheme for the model. Yt is equal to a naught plus beta naught plus xt plus beta one xt minus one plus beta two xt minus two plus error term. Okay. So let's go back to our notes now. So with coex geometric model, coex geometric scheme, what is geometric? What is geometric? From A level, not even from first year, from A level. What is geometric? We had geometric progression and what? Arithmetic progression. Is that so? So now we have this model, yt is equal to a naught plus b naught xt plus b1 xt minus one plus b2 xt minus two up to plus, up to the last one. Okay, away the error term is normally distributed means zero invariance sigma squared a. And expected value of u i u j is equal to zero for i not equal to zero, for i not equal to j. And expected value of u i x i is equal to zero. i is equal to one up to k. When geometric scheme is applied, the coefficients change or decline. Are you listening? The coefficients decline in the form of a geometric progression. That is B1 is equals to lambda B naught. Is it clear? Then B2 is equals to lambda squared B naught or lambda B1. Out together. Then B3 is equals to lambda to the power of three B naught. Up to lambda BS is equals to lambda to the power of S B naught. Is it clear? In general, B i is equal to lambda to the power of i B naught for lambda lying between zero and one. Is it clear? If we substitute in the original model, we get, now in the original model, we are substituting now where we have B one, we put what lambda B naught. Where we have B two, we put what lambda to the power of two B naught. We have substituted there. Is it clear? Can we substitute that? Pana B naught, pana B one, na B two, na B three, and so forth. So far, so good. Then we are going to leg now y t by once. We are going to leg y t once. So y t becomes what? Y t minus one. Then x t becomes what? X t minus one. Then X t minus two becomes what? X X t uh, X t minus three becomes what? And so forth. Then U t becomes what? Is it clear? Yes. Then next thing, next thing, we multiply what we have left by what lambda, and subtract it from the previous equation. So let's multiply this one here y t by lambda. So we are multiplying throughout by lambda. Is it clear? Yeah. Then subtract from the from this first equation ish. So we have what y t minus lambda y t minus one. Can you see it? Yeah. Then the next one a naught minus lambda a naught. Is it clear? Yeah. The next one we have what b naught lambda xt minus minus what b naught xt minus one minus lambda xt minus one what do we get we are saying we are multiplying this by lambda then we subtract it from this one here okay b naught xt remains as b naught xt and is well is it clear then the next one in the xt minus one is lambda b naught xt minus one. Then in the xt minus one is time of lambda also. So it's b naught xt minus one, b naught lambda x minus one. So what does it, what do we get? Zero. What about in the xt minus two is lambda squared b naught xt minus two minus e to lambda is. 
lambda squared p naught x minus two. What do we get? Zero. So all the rest becomes zero, except your consider ish, which is u t minus lambda u t minus one, which is this one here. Is it clear? Now, down to Torachi, yt ush, Thomas to the other side. So we end up with what yt is supposed to a naught one minus lambda plus b naught xt plus lambda x minus yt minus one plus vt. That's our model now. That's the way how to derive coix geometric model. Is it clear? Yes. My friend, is it clear? Play yes. for me, my friends. <laughs> now, the other question was on dummy variables. I think that's the last section on this 6.5. I asked you the question. These are the questions here. We should see that they are very simple. Define dummy variable. Next, give five examples of how dummy variable can be used as proxies for other variables. Okay? So that's the question A and B. We are going to answer those, that one, and we are done with, with today's lecture. Okay, so let's move on and uh, finish that. Dummy variable and test for structural change. So what is a dummy variable? That was the first question. Can we read it together? What is a dummy variable? A dummy variable Okay, I want one person to read it. Can someone read? Yes, for the first time. <laughs> a dummy variable is a variable that can be what? Constructed to develop a variation of the variable under consideration. Okay. The units assigned to dummy variables are arbitrary. They are arbitrary, but as such that the variation of the variable are approximated in the best way. Dummy variables are mainly used as proxies for other variables, which cannot be measured for various reasons. Now, examples. First question was define dummy variable. Second question, give examples. Example, proxies to qualitative factors. What are qualitative factors? Qualitative factors. <laughs> it's written there. Dummy variables can be used as proxies to qualitative or categorical factors, such as religion, employment categories, region of origin, language, and race. Okay. It was. No, but up example is. So I don't have to go into detail on the example. Okay. So we can categorize religion. We can call religion as vector as our variable x. But x can take values what? One, two, three, four, five, depending on how we have categorized our our variable, our the religion categories. If I'm hearing a lot of noise, it disturbs me. I get disturbed. I don't know about you, but when people are talking and I'm also lecturing, it disturbs. Okay, let's try and be quiet. I know you know better than me, but please listen to me and don't disturb your neighbor. I know you want to explain to your neighbor better than I'm explaining, but for now, listen to me. I'm in charge. <laughs> What do you think? Am I not in charge? Yeah. I'm in charge for now. When you go outside, you can now tell, call your neighbor and say, now let me explain you, to you what Say was trying to say. Uh-huh. Okay. So we have the first one. It's proxies what qualitative variables. Proxies to numerical factors. That's another one. Okay. Numerical factors like edge. We can now group edge into different groups. Like here, we have different groups, like 20 to 30, 30 and over. Okay? Then we assign one to group A, zero to group B. We are using them as dummy variables now. Are we together? 
Then measuring shift of a function, when there is a shift, then you can say zero before a shift, one after a what? A shift. Tutos. Is there more? On the dependent variable, we can also do the same. What we, like what we've done in what? Independent variables. Those are proxies, okay? Seasonal adjustment when there is seasonality. Okay, seasonal adjustment. Now, that was an example of uh, the situated estimation of which we've done it already. On the first part, sec first section, it was talking about situated estimation, which I said you can go and read. Now, this more a more practical example to do with that. Okay. And that will be the end of this unit. Thank you, my friend. This you didn't say, say stop, we didn't understand. So I'm assuming that you understood. So now, now what is happening? Today's what? Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh, clip for me. Hey. <laughs> so I hear that there is an ASZ going on starting tomorrow. Is it the uh, Actual Society of Zimbabwe? Oh, you don't even know. All right. So since you don't know, come for lecture tomorrow. Okay, we'll meet tomorrow. Then tomorrow, 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 this is the last but one lecture. So tomorrow, most likely we'll finish our course. Someone is asking, what about this? Am I to say? When are going to write? You see, I've got to go to So, when do you want your test? I don't want the test. So, tomorrow's lecture, I'll give you a lecture. I won't give you an assignment based on that lecture. I'll give you a test based on that lecture. So Monday, Pamuno Uya. Monday, Pamuno Uya. From nine o'clock up to ten. It's just it's supposed to be just one hour. Okay, nine to ten. Nine to ten. You will write your no. Huh? No. <laughs> All right, all right, let's say it this way. Let's say it this way. Yes, you will write it on Monday, but you will write it in the afternoon. From two. Yes. 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 This again. Mr. Moyo, which I go? How many are doing this here? Messi. So what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? You have come back. What do you want me to do? What are your tests? What do you want me to do? Now they are saying then you say here to Popana because I patana. So I'm trying to yeah. No, now he's saying something else. He's saying just this coming Friday. 